Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Angelica Violet. I like to talk about and do a lot of things, but today we'll be talking about being fat. Speaking of being fat, we'll be talking about the most iconic pop star out there right now, Miss Lizzo. Before we get into this conversation, I want to remind you all that I'm not a doctor and you are probably not also a doctor. So let's maybe take that into consideration before we go slamming on our keyboards talking about how all fat people will die before they're 30. I'm 24, so that date might be coming pretty short for me. So um, stay tuned if you wanna see if I live past 30. <laughs> and if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. So let's hop into this. Question of the day, is Lizzo promoting obesity? If any of you follow me, I hope that you would know that my answer would be no. But of course, we're gonna delve into this question and talk about everything. Before we can really answer that question, we need to break down what it's really asking us. I am no English scholar, but I really wanted to look through the definition of these words and break down what the question is really asking us so we can get the correct answer. Obesity is an abnormal or excessive amount of fat that may, emphasis on may, impair health. So to get to that obese or overweight diagnosis, you get that from having your BMI calculated. A lot of the times when you do see a doctor, your BMI will automatically be calculated no matter like what system they use to kind of input all of your information. Lately, whenever I go to the doctor, I've been getting these like exit sheets and they go over like everything that happened today, any medications I've prescribed, but also like right on that front page, it's like weight, height, blood pressure, pulse, BMI. And it's just like, okay, what is a BMI? Most people don't know what it is besides the simple calculation, which is why I want to go into more depth about it. I've talked about the BMI in a couple of my other videos regarding diet culture. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave a playlist down below if you want to learn more about the anti-diet culture and how the whole world is being brainwashed. The BMI was created in 1830s by a man named Lambert Aldolf Jackies, I think, I can't pronounce his name, Quinlet. He was a Belgium astronomer, mathematician, statistician, and sociologist. He is best known for his sociological work, whom to Quinlet represented the social ideal. And of course, when Mr. Mann was conducting this study, he only did it on white European men. For the inventor, the BMI was a way of measuring populations, not just individuals and it was designed for the purposes of statistics, not in regards of individual health. So when I started researching more about the BMI, I started to think, can these measurements accurately describe like queer women or black indigenous people of color, especially when it's just studied on white European men. But the BMI is also under a lot of scrutiny for other reasons. One big one is that when you are taking the BMI, you're automatically placing fat people, overweight people, whatever you want to call the fatties. You're placing them in these really high risk categories without knowing anything else about their health, which is if you have a high BMI, you're automatically unhealthy just by percentage, but you really can't know a person's health by just how much they weigh. Another reason that the BMI is scrutinized is because the BMI does not know the difference between muscle and fat. Body mass index does not show the difference between muscle and fat. So it does not always accurately predict when weight can lead to health problems, says Kim Larson, a health and wellness coach. And like Kim said, which I will emphasize again, the BMI does not know the difference or cannot calculate the difference between fat and muscle, which can, which I think is interesting too, because I mean, I didn't watch the Olympics and I don't watch football either, but you do have these athletes that are technically probably overweight or obese, but they would technically be unhealthy because of the BMI. But like they're out here like doing all these physical activities. And I'm sure because, you know, they're in the Olympics or they're in the NFL, I'm sure they're getting like the best health care. They work with the best doctors, nutritionists, and they're constantly exercising. So it's like, just because someone's fat doesn't necessarily mean that they're unhealthy. I guess that's just another food for thought we'll have for this that I probably won't be able to exactly address in this video. I can't just assume that every single one of these people that are fat and athletes are healthy, but we should not assume that they are unhealthy. We should also not assume that every skinny or average sized person is healthy, but we also should not 
assume that they're unhealthy. Which then leads me to the study that I found when researching this topic. A previous study looked at more than 40,000 people across all population groups and reported that more than 30% of the people in the normal BMI are cardiometabolically unhealthy based on their blood pressure readings, metabolic labs such as good and bad cholesterol, triglycerides, glucose, and C-reactive protein. In addition, nearly half of the overweight people and 29% of the obese people were deemed healthy on the basis of these health markers. The authors of the study estimated that as many as 74 million people who are considered unhealthy on the basis of their BMI are in fact healthy according to these other parameters. I just thought that was really interesting because like most people associate being fat with being unhealthy when there's been research shown that even if you are fat like you can be healthy based on different parameters which then also brings me to question what does one deem as healthy there are so many different forms of health that I think it's a really ambiguous term that really can't narrow down exactly what every single person thinks. Like health can mean physical health, mental health, spiritual health, financial health. Like what are we talking about when we're saying that fat people are unhealthy? Like what part of the health are we talking about? Are you talking about their BMI? Because as we've seen so far, that can't really accurately measure a person's health. BMI can of course be used to help assess someone's health, but it's important to take other assessment tools into consideration, especially because just because if someone has a high BMI doesn't necessarily mean that their health is completely doomed and they're gonna die in the next 24 hours. All factors, including personal and family health history is important to address. And then also including other body mint measures provide a better indicator of someone's health. So that's the BMI. That's where we get the term obesity from. So let's break down what promoting is. The definition of promoting is furthering the progress of something, especially a cause, venture, or aim. It can also be defined as support or actively encouraging something. I mean, I don't follow Lizzo's every single move on social media, but I don't think I've ever seen her like having a poster or like, at some sort of town center holding up like a sign that says like let's all be fat stop being skinny you know have you okay i just wanted to make sure because i couldn't find anything like that online simply existing does not mean promoting is lizzo also then promoting blackness and womanhood because she is living in a body that exhibits those traits. No, she's not really like out here doing ads or giving shout outs to really any of those things. She's just existing as a happy, fat, successful black woman and showing others that they can do that too. Lizzo is an amazing multifaceted woman and to narrow everything she's done down to just her body is completely insulting. She is a singer, rapper, songwriter, and a flutist. Lizzo has also worked as an actress she was a voice performer in the animated film called Ugly Dolls, and she also appeared in the film called Hustlers. In 2019, Time named Lizzo Entertainer of the Year. In addition to her three Grammy Awards, she has also won a Billboard Music Award, a BET Award, and two Soul Train Music Awards. But since people just want to talk about how Lizzo is promoting obesity, I guess you all are forcing me to have that conversation here online. Is Lizzo promoting obesity? No. You want to know what Lizzo is doing? She is promoting self-love and self-acceptance. She does this in a plethora of ways, but I'll be talking about how she does it on her social media and in her music. As I've already mentioned, and Lizzo has herself, she is just a fat woman and she is demonstrating that people can accept themselves and love themselves for what they look like and who they are. This is in no shape or form promoting obesity. Since we want to talk about health, take this in for consideration. I know we mentioned that we don't really have this universal term of what health is, but if one is starting to love themselves, you know, and get a self-esteem, they are improving their mental health. And mental health and physical health are highly correlated. So if Lizzo is helping improve someone's mental health, that can mean 
their physical health can improve, which means Lizzo is making us healthy. Thanks, Queen. You're doing God's work. While Lizzo was out here on all these social media platforms and creating music that promotes self-love and self-acceptance, she did not ask to be the face of the body positivity movement. She was just declared it by many. The body positivity movement was started to get underrepresented and unrepresented bodies in media. Fat bodies are, of course, one of those marginalized bodies, we also need to remember that this movement is for queer, disabled, black, indigenous people of color, or basically anyone that doesn't really fall into that white thin ideal that we are all brainwashed to want. So why is demanding more representation of these marginalized bodies such a bad thing? You know, Lizzo is fulfilling some of these needs of some marginalized bodies that needs to be represented in the media. But why is it such a bad thing? Especially because majority of the population are in these marginalized bodies. I mean, think about it. Who is exactly the beauty standard? I would probably say a very small percentage of people. So why is it a bad thing that we want people that we actually look like in media and in movies, in music, in films. It's almost like society has trained all of us to hate people in these marginalized bodies. And if you are in these marginalized bodies, you are taught to hate yourself. Even though Lizzo has told that she should not and does not deserve to be in the limelight, she has taken it and it has caused a huge disruption in pop culture. I mean, Lizzo is not the first person that strays from the beauty standard. I mean, think about it. Have you ever been to like the grocery store during the summertime? And it's like 50 celebrities that look disgusting like beached whales and should go kill themselves because they look fat. Why does the the whole world get flipped upside down and go ape shit when someone strays from the beauty standards that like no one fulfills anyway? It's like what does society actually want us to look like? None of this is really obtainable. And speaking of that, I saw this post on Facebook the other day and it read, Sweetie is too fake, Lizzo is too fat, Megan the Stallion is too big and strong, Koi is too skinny. I'm starting to think that there is no right way to occupy a body when you're a woman. And I think exactly that I couldn't have said it better myself. I won't have time to like speak on this in this video, but once you bring gender into this conversation of promoting obesity and fat phobia in the media, when you speak about it from men and women, it's completely different. Like DJ Khaled, I am seeing nothing on him promoting obesity or glorifying obesity, but that's because he's a man. We have Lizzo out here doing her thing, putting out beautiful artwork that changes so many people's lives every single day. And the only thing we do is questioning if she's promoting obesity. I mean, I don't want anyone to be like saying anything fat phobic to DJ Khaled. I just think it's an interesting conversation that needs to be had about fat phobia, but then also misogyny. Okay, okay, okay. You know, I could make like 20 videos <laughs> inside of this video because I just have so many little food for thoughts, so many questions. Anyway, speaking of promoting obesity, and the next part of the conversation we have to talk about is Lizzo's weight and health. Of course, health is always brought into the conversation when talking about fat people because society has taught us that it's a stereotype that if you're fat, you're unhealthy, which is simply not true. I mean, we touched on that a little bit at the beginning of this video, but it's important to remember that first off, Lizzo's health is none of our fucking business. Second of all, even if she was, you know, extremely unhealthy and she had these disorders and diseases that could be stereotyped from being fat, that doesn't mean she deserves any of this scrutiny or disrespect that she gets on the internet for being fat and occupying a fat body. A fat person's life and all their decisions is critiqued way more than a thin person's. Like think about this. So you know how all these celebs are like doing these collabs with McDonald's? Like we have Travis Scott, we have BTS, we have Sweetie. Like imagine if Lizzo did that. Promoting obesity, oh my God, Lizzo promoting obesity. She's gonna make all of her kids fat. Okay, but like since, you know, Travis Scott, BTS, Sweetie are doing this and they're all skinny legends, it's like, Oh my god, so iconic. I mean, 
I'm happy for them because they're getting their bag, but I think it's just interesting to like switch perspectives and think about it if someone else was doing something because the perception is going to change so drastically. Speaking of food, what the F is Lizzo eating? If you don't follow her on social media like I do, you may not know that she is vegan. And yes, there can be unhealthy vegans, blah, blah, blah. Like, I mean, I'm vegetarian and I eat a lot of processed shit, but from what Lizzo has posted online of what she does eat, like in her what I eat in a day videos, it is very plant-based and does not have a lot of processed foods. And there are tons of health benefits to being vegan. Plant-based diets are also high in fiber, complex carbohydrates, and water content from fruits and vegetables. Eating less meat can also reduce the risk of stroke, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, certain cancers, and type 2 diabetes. But go ahead, um, Keto bros, go smash on your keyboard and tell me that you're so much healthier than Lizzo because you only eat chicken breasts and bacon and somehow you lost 25 pounds this month. Just kidding, shut the fuck up, I don't care. So we don't know exactly what Lizzo is doing once you know the, the camera stops rolling. From what we do see, it does seem like she's eating a pretty healthy diet. And of course we have to touch on the subject of exercise. You know, Lizzo is an entertainer and I think she is in incredible physical shape from what I can tell online and that's regardless of what she looks like or what she weighs. She runs, sings, dances, and plays a flute for like two hours straight when she's performing and you know, she makes it look easy. Like it, it looks pretty effortless for her. I've never seen Lizzo in concert, but I do follow her on social media and she is putting out a lot of content of her doing these exercise challenges and her everyday workout routines. And of course, like I mentioned, we don't know what's happening when the camera's off, but she must be doing exercise when the camera's off because there is no way that you're gonna be able to do these two hour long performances and not be physically active and fit. I don't think it can be reasonably argued that Lizzo is unhealthy based on all the information we went off today. Of course, we'll never officially know if Lizzo is unhealthy or if she is because we're not her or her doctor. But being healthy should not be required for a fat person to be respected. Fat people shouldn't have to justify their health by all these medical tests and workout videos. Everyone, even fat people, deserve respect and to live in a body without constant shame or discrimination, even if someone is unhealthy. I mean, are you blatantly just disrespectful to people because they're unhealthy? Like, are you disrespectful to cancer patients? Are you disrespectful to people with diabetes? I hope not. If you are, maybe like, go get some help. <laughs> and to touch on the big question of the day again, is Lizzo promoting obesity? No. Do you hate fat people? I hope your answer was no, but if it was yes and it was more like, oh, I didn't know I hated fat people, I'll leave some research down below so you can go like get some more information. But if you said, yes, I hate fat people and I want them all to disappear off the planet, go seek help in touch grass maybe. If you have problems with Lizzo being a beautiful, hot, successful, fat black woman, I think that says something more about you than it does Lizzo. Thank you so much for watching and if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. Maybe share this video with someone you think would maybe be interested. <laughs> Peace.